Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, let me fix my hat because it looks crooked as hell on the camera. Whatever. All right. So, anyways, <clears throat> what's going on for this week? Uh, I'm going to be going over all the updates that I've been doing on uh, Smurfy, Fat Smurf, whatever y'all guys might know him by, Shop Car. Um, as a new owner, uh, another buddy of mine bought him from my other buddy. So, uh, and pretty much he went ahead and right from the get go did all the upgrades that I had been wanting this car to have. So here very soon, uh, we're gonna be going to the track. Uh, we never really got to do the track before with the stick shift setup. The clutch, clutch that I had <clears throat> uh, sucked. It was um, a spec, I don't know, E-trim or something dumb. There was literally no no slip in it, maybe half an inch, an inch, like literally an inch to just slip it. And it was a pain in the ass to drive and everything. But now let me go over all the updates that I've done and you'll understand why we're going to be taking it to the track. So in case anyone doesn't remember the car, four or five Whipple built motor, yada, yada, yada. Um, one of the first things that we did because of this big ass blower, uh, we went ahead and it's kind of difficult to see actually. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. We did the, uh, uh, MFP crank support. You can kind of see it. Um, so yeah, we did that to come on focus. We did that so that way you know, help protect the crank a little with this big blower. Um, the crank is, is treated and everything, but you never know. And if we ever get crazy and pull you down anymore, then, um, you know, that'll just put you in more stress. So why not add the insurance? Another cool thing about the MFP crank support compared to the competition, you see right there where this setup right here, if it focuses, come on. Okay, so you see where it bolts to that pulley. If y'all had seen the video of Silverback when the timing cover broke, that is the pulley, the pulley area that broke. So <clears throat> what's cool about this crank support, obviously, is it bolts to that area. So it helps with that weaker part of the timing cover. Um, I had been getting uh, other timing covers welded if I had already had them off, um, which is like what I'm gonna do to that car actually once I tear it apart. But uh, but yeah, so that's that's a really cool feature of that timing cover. I mean, of the crank um, support. Uh, what else did I do? Did a lot of things. Uh, went ahead and added a catch can setup. Um, a while back, I had just went ahead and vented this. Hold on, let me turn the light off on the camera. I think it's thrown off the focus. All right, I think that's a little better. So a while back, a good while back, um, I had the just some filters up on top of here, and there was a lot of oil getting all over the place because obviously it was a filter, and with this big blower and the higher compression and everything, it's a lot of crankcase pressure. So oil was ended up um, would end up dripping out here, running down here running along there, getting on the headers and making the engine bay look horrible, plus smoking everywhere and stuff like that. It just wasn't a good sight. So went ahead and added a UPR catch can. Um, the cool thing about this catch can actually is uh, besides the fact that it's completely remote, it doesn't tie into the blower system or anything like that at all. Uh, it's actually a coyote catch can. It's the 11 to 14 uh, plug and play setup um, for Coyote specifically, but obviously these uh, little adapters, whatever you want to call them, are exactly the same. And they're basically in the same area as the Coyote. So I went ahead and just used it. It's nice, it's remote. It's uh, like 250 bucks. Um, I didn't have to do any fabrication or nothing like that. Completely plug and play. Uh, I mounted this one right here 
uh, but because we did a battery relocation, which I'll get to that in a, in a moment. Um, but on other cars that I have done it on since, uh, if it has if it has an ice tank in the back, you can simply flip those around, uh, put the longer line over here, the shorter line on this side, and then get the catch can and mount it right here where the uh, stock um, intercooler tank is. So anyways, on, on to the rest of the stuff. Uh, did a battery relocation. Um, I know this doesn't look super, super great, but I didn't want anything to get on it. Uh, but it has like an actual um, terminal under here and I was able to reuse the factory uh, fuse stuff. Um, it's hard to see the terminal, but there's an actual terminal under there. I kind of want y'all to see it now. Anyways, you can kind of see it right there, the actual terminal. Uh, I didn't have to delete anything or get rid of uh, power steering stuff or nothing like that. It all still comes to one little junction. And then I just put this uh, little rubber piece from the factory deal just to help protect it. I know it doesn't look like super great, but it's just for just for safety purposes in case anything ever falls on it for whatever reason, um, then it won't uh, short it, short to it. And then the last thing, um, at least for while we're under here, is uh, if you noticed, it has a dipstick now. So. Uh, yeah, we did a TH400 setup. Um, JPC uh, sent us over a setup. Obviously, we purchased it. They didn't just send it. But uh, so TH400, I believe um, I remember right. It's a it's a stage three, so it has all the pretty much all the upgraded stuff. I think it's the 13 or 1400 horsepower rated setup. Um, went ahead and did the the AEM trans mount. I mean trans mount, uh, trans temp gauge. It actually worked out pretty cool mounting it right there. It's nice and visible and it doesn't go on the A pillar anymore. So it doesn't look all tacky, which that is about to get replaced as well. Um, and we did a little shift light to help us out and not having to watch the gauges so much. Um, so along, just to try to show you all the trans a little bit i'll kind of peek under here uh you can also see too we went ahead and dumped the exhaust so no more cat back stops right there and it's fairly loud it sounds like a little dragster actually um let me see i can't this damn exhaust is in the way but anyways it's a th400 nothing super crazy and what else i think Let's see, battery location, went ahead and did that. Uh, stock exhaust and a nasty ass tank that needs clean, but uh, it's on the charger right now. But anyways, the battery in the back, this was all, all um, a Summit setup, I believe, if I remember right. I have to look back through the orders, but uh, I believe it was just a, a basic Summit racing setup. Um, what was it, Taylor made, I think, or Taylor? Taylor Racing, I don't know, Taylor something, I believe, as a, as a kit. Very budget friendly and not super expensive. And very easy to install. <clears throat> and last but not least, and then I'll wrap up this stuff, is, let's see, see if we can see this. Oh yeah, there we go. Viking front coil overs. So now we can actually get some good weight transfer Instead of the stock setup, uh, we can adjust some ride height based on whatever type of racing we're doing. Um, and we'll just have a lot more control. But anyways, uh, that about wraps up the car. I'm gonna do some test tips with it. I've already done a few just to kind of see how it does. Um, uh, oh, and I got new, new wheels if, if you notice. Uh, throughout the video those are new front runners and we have new tires for the back as well so uh, I'm gonna do that uh, hopefully before this video gets put out there I'll have a draggy video of it I did a draggy um, in it the last time I took it out uh, like last week or, or two weeks ago something like that um, 
I didn't do anything, didn't uh, mess with the shocks or anything. I honestly, I completely forgot. I just went to the spot, did a little hit to see how the car would react. <clears throat> it was the first watt pull that I've done with the with the TH400. And I wanted to see what the car would do. Plus, now that we have, oh, another thing I forgot, we put the end gauge on it. So it it was previously tuned by Lun, of course, uh, but now we have an end gauge, so I can easily data log. I don't have to have the laptop with me. Uh, you know, all the perks of the end gauge. Uh, but anyways, back to the draggy. Did the draggy. Uh, I just had my phone uh, sitting in the cup holder. I didn't uh, have the video part of it on. Uh, it spun like the car's always done. Um, I pedaled it, got back in it, shifted it in the third, um, and then ran it past the 130 mark. And a draggy to 4.8. Uh, not bad for spinning, pedaling, and getting back in it. I was actually fairly happy with that. So hopefully... I get the traction stuff sorted out, mess with the shocks because they were completely zero, zero compression and rebound. Like if I was cruising it because that's what I was doing and then I decided to go do a random hit, didn't even think about adjusting the shocks. So mess with the shocks a little, uh, maybe mess with anti-roll bars some, um, try to put down some decent power. If I have to, I guess I'm gonna have to go to a good concrete road instead of my local concrete road. This thing makes a shit ton of torque and it's very complicated. It's very hard to manage. Um, Lund did send me a ramp tune, so hopefully that'll help out a little more instead of all the timing on the hit. Um, so I'm hoping I can get a 4.5 out of it. If I can get a 4.5 or, or a little faster, I will be super happy with the car. Um, but then we're gonna go to the track. We wanna get an eight second pass out of this thing. Um, it should definitely do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one last thing is during the data log, IETs went super high, 200 degrees, uh, <clears throat> and it has everything, and it has everything, the ice tank in the back, EMP pump, heat exchanger up front, but uh, the downfall of the whole system is the factory intercooler under the blower, 26-ish uh, PSI with the 4.5 Whipple is... Uh, it, that's a lot of heat that's a lot of uh, compressed air and the factory intercooler is not cutting it so i have something in the works for that so y'all stay tuned for that um i think that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video thanks for watching and until the next project